Hello everyone, this is Rob Cavallini, and I wanted to give you a quick introduction to the correlations section of VLAB. To get to our correlation welcome page, on the analyses dropdown, click on correlation analysis. This takes you to our welcome page, which provides a broad overview of all the correlation analyses we have in VLAB. Correlation analyses are defined by static data sets in our database. Here you can see the correlation analysis between equity sectors. To pick a different data set, just select the drop down menu and select the different data set. As you can see now, we're looking at the correlation analysis for the commodities data set. Below the data set selection box, you can see a summary of the analysis which you've selected. In this box, you can see the latest date for the analysis in which it was estimated. Also, in the box next to it, you see the asset, which is the most highly correlated asset by default. In this case, the S&P GSCI heating oil index happens to be the most correlated asset with all other assets in this data set. And as you can see, the average correlation equal weighted across all of the assets in this data set with the S&P GSCI heating oil index is 0.2434. Next to that box, you can see for this given date, October 2021, the average correlation across all correlation pairs in the data set, which in this case is 0 0.1294. In the box below, you can see a two dimensional representation of the correlation between each asset in the data set. We use multi dimensional scaling to reduce the dimensions of the correlations to two dimensions. Again, heating oil is highlighted as it is the most closely correlated asset with all other assets in the data set. The circles which are closest to heating oil are those that are most correlated with it. For example, West Texas Intermediate Oil. Circles that are farther away are less correlated. For example, rice. As you hover over each circle, at the bottom of the chart, you can see the multidimensional scaling distance. In this case, the distance between heating oil and wood is 0.74. If you would like to select a different asset in the data set, simply click on the circle. By clicking on the soybeans, everything is rescaled to be centered around soybeans. The time series chart to the right displays cross-section correlations. Each column represents a different date. As you can see, as I scroll left, the data displayed changes to show the respective date. Clicking on a column changes the date so that it's permanently displayed. As you hover over each cell in the column, you can see the average pairwise correlation of that asset with all other assets in the data set. Each cell is also color coded, progressively getting more red as the average correlation gets closer to one. And as correlations get closer to negative one, the color shading gets more blue. This allows you to see visually how correlated each asset in the data set is with each other. For example, for the commodities data set, you can see in general, correlations are very close to zero. Whereas if we switched to the equity sectors data set, in general, you see more color variation, but more red, meaning that in general, the assets in this data set are more correlated with each other. Lastly, at the bottom of the chart, you can scroll to see more time history and select different time periods. You can also do this via the date picker. And lastly, at the bottom of the screen, much like we have with the volatility analyses, we show the weeks 
and Munt's most popular analyses. To head to the analysis page for the currently selected correlation analysis, click the analysis page link. On the analysis page, you can see the title of the analysis, as well as the average pairwise correlation for the current estimate of this correlation analysis, as well as when the analysis was last updated. Scrolling down farther on the page, you can see a correlation matrix. We at most display 20 assets in this correlation matrix. And using this dropdown, you can select either the 20 most correlated, 20 least correlated, or choose a custom data set from the drop down menu. The correlation matrix that you see is color coded much the same as on the correlation welcome page. That is to say, the color gets more red as correlations tend more towards one, more blue as correlations tend towards a negative one, and green as correlations tend to zero. On the right side of the screen, there's a drop down to view the parameter estimates for this analysis, as well as the estimation period used to estimate those parameters. We also list all the constituents of the data set in the box below the parameter estimates, as well as the ability to view other models for this data set. On the correlation matrix, also as you hover over each cell, you can see the specific value of the correlation for this correlation pair. In this case, platinum and West Texas oil. The correlation is 0.2374. We also provide the ability to plot the correlations. You can plot a specific correlation pair by clicking on the cell. You also have the ability to plot the correlations of one asset with all other assets in the correlation matrix by clicking on the diagonal cell. In this case, we'll plot heating oil with respect to all other assets in the correlation matrix. Scrolling to the bottom, we can see a graph of all these correlation pairs. In addition, we can also see the 95th and fifth quantile and median correlation for all assets in the data set. If we'd like, we can also change that to view the first and second principal components for this data set. Lastly, at the bottom, like in the welcome page, we're able to select different time periods to graph by either using the date picker the pre-selected dates ranges to the right of the date picker or by sliding the box in the graph underneath. Lastly, at the bottom, we have some quick summary statistics for this correlation analysis, including the upper and lower correlations and the first and second principal components.